Hi guys, uh, thank you for your interest in the Critter Depot. Uh, we sell and ship hundreds of thousands of live crickets and superworms each and every week. And today we want to show you how to breed and raise your own crickets. Um, now crickets, you know, sometimes your pets eat them a lot. They probably should be eating about 30 to 50 every day. But going through all those crickets, you know, the cost can add up. We definitely understand that. So. Uh, raising your own crickets it's not challenging it's not difficult and you only need uh, some basic supplies from from Lowe's or Home Depot or any type of hardware store so what I'd like to go with you over today is how you can set up your own cricket breeding area and uh, just start raising your own crickets um, so the first thing you're gonna want is plastic tub now so I have two of them I'm gonna make two here today and each of these tub these are 56 quart tubs I bought them at uh, Home Depot for eight dollars a piece and they are um, 12 inches tall and you're looking at 23 inches wide and then about 16 inches long so this is this, this is a 56 quart tub and this is perfect each one is perfect for 500 crickets because I have a thousand crickets here that I'm going to divvy up in between each tub. Um, so once you have your tub here, you got to use your bedding material. Uh, by far, the best bedding material to use with crickets is a substance called vermiculite. Uh, it's very, it's very dry and uh, it's a ver it's an excellent substrate for crickets because it's very absorbent um, crickets uh, depending on what you use uh, they can get a little smelly so if you use vermiculite that's going to help uh, drastically control the odors um, and this is what we got for vermiculite this is uh, two cubic feet of it uh, I got again I got this at Home Depot and it was 20 bucks for this bag but you know like I said this stuff is very light and uh, practically no weight to it at all so what you're gonna want to do then is take your tub and line maybe about first two inches with the vermiculite just so you have a nice sub substrate for your crickets to move around on there we go spread it around so so looking aside yeah, it might be an inch could probably go a little heavier crickets aren't gonna burrow in it they just use it to walk around on and the benefit of using this is that it's very absorbent so um, you know, when the crickets defecate and go to the bathroom uh, this is gonna control that odor so that's this is perfect this is what you want large plastic tub with uh, some vermiculite on the bottom so so this is step number one the next step is when you raise your crickets they need a separate substrate to lay their eggs in and that other substrate is topsoil topsoil is a lot denser a lot denser than vermiculite it retains moisture a lot better uh, with these cricket eggs you're gonna need those cricket eggs to be in a nice humid environment and that that topsoil is gonna help keep the humidity up um, so you know something you can use Tupperware uh, I got this Tupperware at the dollar store and this is a perfect size this is just a sandwich Tupperware package so what you want to do is just just take one of them like this you want to fill it with your topsoil okay. there you go, just like that okay now that's that's where your crickets are gonna lay their eggs so just take this find a corner and uh, kind of bury it a little bit just 
kind of move, maneuver the bedding around there. Kind of want to fill in the gaps. You don't want your crickets getting stuck back there. So there. Okay, here we have our two uh, cricket habitats. Uh, both of them, we have the same amount of the vermiculite for the bedding, and we have our topsoil in um, the egg depository where the cricket, female crickets will lay their eggs. So now it's time to introduce our crickets to their environment. Okay, so I'm gonna to pretend to be you guys. Uh, I just got a thousand crickets in the mail. Um, so as you can see, we package them in screen containers and I got uh, a thousand quarter inch crickets. Quarter inch crickets, they're only about seven days old. They're not quite ready to breed yet. If you're looking for crickets to breed right away, then you might wanna consider uh, like the 5 8 inch. That are, they're about 10 to 12 days old. Um, the reason I recommend going with something a little younger because then it gives them time to acclimate to their new environment. Uh, after the transit, they can get a little stressed out, and if they're sexually active, they might not uh, adjust as quickly as younger crickets can. So that's why I think the quarter inch, starting with quarter inch, might be a better plan um, than going right away with crickets that can start breeding right away. Um, so here we, I already opened up the box, so we already got some Lucy's. egg crate put it in there put the other egg crate put it in the other one and just gonna pop them in you know the transit's rough on them so they're gonna be jumping not sure what's going on so they're gonna be jumping everywhere and you know if you're capable of getting every last cricket and tell me your secrets because I'm not sure how exactly, you know, how to not get some runaway crickets. Okay. So that was a box of a thousand. And, you know, I don't know exactly if I exactly have 500 a piece, but it's good enough. Um, so after the transit, these crickets are severely dehydrated. So you're going to need to give them moisture right away. Um, sometimes people like to put in little tubs of water, um, that's okay, but that can actually cause your crickets to drown. Um, something I like to use are slices of tangerines or oranges, uh, watermelon, pineapple, uh, real juicy fruit, because uh, that has enough substance and uh, hydration to get your crickets uh, hydrated after the long transit. Um, and you know something I actually like are these little cups these little cups of oranges I see these you, they sell these for a dollar at the dollar store um, so you know these cups they're saturated in water I already dumped out the um, the juice so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these mandarins inside the cricket habitat and in a few minutes you're gonna see these crickets swarming around these mandarins because they are thirsty. Okay, so as you can see, our crickets are fed. Uh, they are starting to swarm the orange slices. They're getting their hydration. They're also getting uh, viable substance uh, in nutrition. And um, so really, what, they're gonna live in here for about a week. So in one week, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna check in on their tubs of topsoil. Um, what I'm gonna be looking for are cricket eggs. 
and as I start to see more and more cricket eggs, um, there's a point where they're no longer going to lay cricket eggs in this because it's going to be too many. So what, I'm, what I will then do is lift this up and put it into a new tub without any other crickets. Then those crickets will hatch and you'll have your pinhead crickets isolated all by themselves. Um, and so, you know, in about a week after that happens, I'll film it, let you guys see it, and we'll, uh, we'll review it. So, um, talk to you then. Okay guys, we're back. It has been about two weeks since we put together our rearing bins and that has allowed our crickets about seven to ten days to breed and lay eggs inside their egg containers. Um, so what we have here, uh, we took out the two containers and now it's time um, uh, to make the incubator. So the incubator bin is very similar uh, to the rearing bin, but it's probably a little simpler to, to make. It requires less less actual material. Um, now, one thing I wanted to go over that I didn't mention before was, um, as your egg bins have been sitting inside the rearing bins, uh, it's a good idea just to check on their moisture. Um, now, you don't need a, a hydrometer or anything sophisticated. You can just use your hands and see if it's damp. Just make sure it has a nice dark color to it. And if not, uh, all you need to do is just uh, take a spray bottle filled with water and you just, just want to spray down, spray the topsoil down. That'll help keep the, keep the topsoil nice and damp and it'll uh, greatly increase the chances of all the eggs hatching successfully, which will increase your cricket yield. Um, so, you know, so now that we've removed our egg containers from the rearing bins, uh, these containers are sat, are, uh, filled with eggs. Now you're not going to see any on the top. The crickets like to burrow into the topsoil and lay their eggs down into the topsoil. Um, so, uh, just, just give it about seven weeks, uh, I'm sorry, seven days after, um, your three eighth inch crickets have been, um, resting inside their breeding the rearing bin and you'll know that it's time to get their incubator bin put together and putting their incubator bin is it's a lot simpler than the rearing bin um, so all you need to do is take another container just like you similar to the rearing bin and just place in the egg crate and that's all you do um, a container like this, you could actually fit, there's enough space in here to fit two more, but since we only made two, uh, we're just going to put two in here for our demonstration. Um, now, uh, you can definitely just keep it like this, um, but what you're going to want to do is locate this into some place that, ha that has a consistent temperature of about 90 degrees. Uh, these incubators... Uh, these eggs are going to need 90 degree temperatures consistently in order for them to mature and to hatch. Um, now, uh, what you can do if you don't have uh, an environment that naturally holds that temperature, uh, you can just get a heating pad and place it underneath. Um, you can take the ceramic lights or the heat lamps that you use for your terrariums um, for your pets and place it on top. Um, the only issue with that is uh, there's, you're going to be dehydrating your topsoil faster than you would if you didn't need it. So just make sure you always have a water bottle. You're checking it every one, uh, every one day or two days, and just make sure that it looks damp on the surface. You don't want to fish your hands through it too much because you could disturb the eggs. But um, you know, once you have that set, um, just let this sit for about a week, and after a week, uh, you'll start seeing some crickets uh, slowly start to hatch out, and. You know, it'll take, it'll probably start hatching about 100 a day, and soon enough, this whole thing will be filled with little pinhead crickets. And once you have your pinhead crickets, you just remove them into a new rearing container like we made two weeks ago, and just allow them to grow, allow them to propagate, and just make sure you're feeding them the same way. And that's how you start your cycle. That's how you start your cricket breeding cycle. Um, so that's, uh, we're just gonna give this bin seven days and see what happens. Okay guys, uh, welcome back. And 
So here's our incubator bin. Uh, we have had it sitting for about eight days so far. And as you can see, uh, we are seeing some pinhead crickets start to, start to hatch from their eggs and start to habitate inside the, um, our incubator. Uh, here's a close up. Uh, you can see them hopping around a little bit. So just always got to make sure your soil is moist because there's still eggs to hatch inside of there. Um, I'm probably going to squish a few when I put this back down. Um, you know, uh, what you can do, you can give them potato slices uh, that will help them, uh, that can feed them. Uh, or you can go with some orange slices uh, or even consider watermelon. Uh, juicier the better, uh, but we just had some, some rotten potatoes sitting around, so I just kind of use that up. Um, and same thing, just want to make sure you're lightly misting this. Uh, now this, this still looks fine, so I'm not going to mist it, but um, your crickets also need water. So uh, in a tub like this, there's a little, there's a little channel around the perimeter. Uh, so I might go ahead actually and just mist it a little bit. What I expect to happen will be the water will run down into the channel and our little crickets can, uh, you know, just get some, just get their hydration. And as you can see, they're starting to go towards the water already. Um, so, but that's it. So what you want to do here is do your best to catch some of these. Uh, I mean, it's real difficult. Uh, you can see that they're hopping around, but just do, catch some, um, put them in a new rearing container. And uh, it's always a good idea to mark the side of the container with a date just to keep track of where you're at with the rearing process and uh, just feed them, water them, and uh, just keep that cycle going. And that's how you breed uh, feeder crickets for your pets. Uh, comment below, let us know if you have any questions or you can email us at contact at the critterdepot.com. Uh, thanks a lot.